In this video, I want to show you how to send your Webflow form submissions to Rowie. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I think there's at least three reasons. The first, if the Webflow plan that you're on does not have enough form submissions for your needs, then you can move it to Rowie and get unlimited form submissions because you're not using Webflow's native form submission features. That's not going to show up in the back end of Webflow. Second, if you need more flexibility with your app. So by default, Webflow forms aren't CMS items. That is, they're not part of your database. And so they're just not as flexible. And thirdly, if you need different data types, for instance, if someone wants to submit a color from a form, you have more flexibility with the data types using Rowy. Okay, so let's get into this. So first we need to make a table. So let's come in here. We're going to want to create a new table. We're going to call this Webflow Forms. Great. That, and let's create that. Awesome. Let's just add a column and we're just going to start with your basic name. Awesome. So we're going to do two things in this video. First, I'm going to show you the easiest setup for getting your form submissions into Rowie that you can do in like under a minute. And then after that, I'm going to show you some cool advanced use cases. Okay. Next, we got to grab a webhook. So here's our webhooks. We're just going to be doing a basic webhook. That's great. Let's just call this Webflow Webhook. Awesome. We're gonna make sure it's active. We're not gonna do anything with our conditions or parser because we're gonna make this the simplest one. Great, I forgot to grab the URL. So you're gonna copy that endpoint. Okay, great. Now we're gonna move over to Webflow. Okay, so I got a simple Webflow page right here. We've got a form block and we've just got one input field right here. Now there's three steps to get this form working. First, we need to set the action and that's that webhook URL. I'm just pasting that in. Make sure your method is post and make sure the ID on your form is this right here. Now it doesn't have to be this, but we're going to be pasting some code, some custom code into Webflow, and that ID has to correspond to this one. So it's easiest just to use this, but just know that it really doesn't matter what this is as long as this ID corresponds to the one in your code. And I'll show you that in a second. Next, for whatever inputs you have, go and select it and make sure the name of the input. So right here, the name property corresponds to the property in Rowie. So here it's name. And so we want to make sure ours is name right here. Great. The last step is to paste in some custom code. Now, if you go to our blog, which we've got linked below, you can get the code from there, or we have it in the description of this video. So you can just copy and paste it in there. But if you just scroll down, here's the code you want to copy and paste into your project. And you just paste that in before the closing body tag of your page. I see I've got it right here. And like I said before, here is where you need that ID to match. So if you've changed it, make sure you change it here and you're all ready to go. So just save it and publish your page. All right. So here's our form. All right, great. Let's put name in, submit it. And there we go. And this is the native Webflow success message. Now let's jump over to Rowy and we can see, boom, there's our form submission. And that's it. That's the simple version of getting unlimited Webflow form submissions into Rowy. Now let's look at a few more advanced features. So the first thing is, if you want to see the logs of your webhook, you can come over here and go over to your webhooks tab and they'll show up here. So this is the one I just did. And so you can see the body of it. The body of the webhook is this object here with a name key and the value is John right there. You can see all the full information right there if you need to debug your webhook. Okay, so let's add some additional columns and see how it works. Maybe we want like a true or false, a Boolean value. Well, we can do that. So let's add it in here. Let's call it TF, true, false. And let's grab our toggle. And you can see around here, this is a true or false value. It defaults to false. That's great. Remember, we need this, the value of the column name right here. So let's grab that. Let's come in and let's add in a checkbox right here. And remember, we have to put in the name correctly for it to map. So this was called TF. It's a true false value. And let's republish and run it. Let's put in Bill. Let's check it. Submit. And boom, there we go. Bill, it was a true value. We checked our box. And let's look at our log so we can just see what it comes in looking like. 
And there we go, we come with TF and on. Okay, awesome, what else can we do? Well, maybe we want a color. This is kind of interesting. So let's say color and let's grab our color and add that. And for this, we're gonna have to do a little bit more custom stuff. So let's come into that webhook and into our parser down here. You can see that we've, a request is the incoming request. And out of that request, we're grabbing our body. And so if you can see here, this returns an object, which will be added as a new row. So here we're putting our body inside this object right here. And the body is what we looked at over in our logs right here. Let's just look at it because this is good, good to see here. So this is our body right here. Right, And so this is the row that's added. And this row has a name property and a TF property. That makes sense, right? Okay, so let's come back in here. And so in our parser right here, what we're gonna do is we are going to make an object right here. We're going to, we're gonna use a beautiful spread syntax, that nice ES6 stuff. So we're just dumping that in here and we're gonna dump in a color property. It's gonna look like this, color, cause that's what name we gave it, and an object in here, and this is hex, and this is going to be body.color. So basically what's going on here is in Firebase, in Rowy, this is how the color field is structured. That is, we've got a key called color, its value is an object, and it has this because it includes colors in a bunch of different values. So hex, HSL, RGB. And so here we're setting the hex value to what's coming in from our body and the color property, because that's just gonna be the hex value. And we have to do this because we have this nesting data structure, and so we just need to give it more explicit directions on how to handle it. Okay, cool. So let's save and deploy that. That takes a second. Now we just need to add a color field into our Webflow form. How do we do that? Well, there's no native color feature, but we can embed some HTML, right? So let's embed, let's put it up here. We're gonna do input of type color, Remember we need that name property and our name is gonna be the same color. This, These are the same here, but it doesn't actually matter. Those don't actually have to be the same. And then let's just give it a default value of something. Let's make something up. That, and it's self-closing. So we can just do that, save and close. Beautiful, that ugly color. <laughs> All right, let's publish this. Stephanie. Let's put a nicer color right there and submit. Awesome, beautiful. Now, one final note, if you have additional fields in your Webflow form that don't have corresponding columns here, the form submission will still work. They'll just be discarded, any additional columns. Let us know if you have any questions. If you have questions about any other fields that we didn't cover, let us know in the comments and we'll help you out and we'll see you in the next video.